I am Tanazim Fahl from second year MBBS Faisalabad Medical University. What I am going to do today is to take you through the ventral or inferior surface of the brain which is also known as the base of the brain. We will see the structures on the base of the brain from the anterior towards the posterior end. On the anterior end, at the, uh, at, on the base of the brain at the anterior end, we can see the part of the frontal lobe of the cerebral hemispheres. These are two frontal lobes of the two cerebral hemispheres and we can see the part of the frontal lobes these which are lying exactly above our eyes on the ethmoid bone so that's why these parts of the frontal lobes are known as the orbital cortex the next structure we can see on the base of the brain are two tracts which are lying on both sides of the midline these tracts are known as the olfactory tracts which are concerned with our smell or with our sense of smell these tracts start from the olfactory bulbs and continue backward to end in the diencephalon. The next structure which we can see on the base of the brain are the two optic nerves on the two sides of the midline. This is the right optic nerve and this is the left optic nerve. And these two nerves crisscross to form a structure which is known as the optic chiasm. Chiasm means X shape. So that's why the optic chiasm contains the crisscross fibers of the two optic nerves. Similarly, continuing backward, we can see this part of the on the base of the brain which is known as the uh, ventral surface of the hypothalamus or floor of the diencephalon which includes thalamus and hypothalamus. In this uh, part we can see a hole which is actually the, st uh, st the side through which the stalk of the pituitary gland comes out. So a pituitary gland lies here. But in this specimen the pituitary gland has been removed and we can see a hole at the attachment site of infant divorum. Similarly, continuing backward, we can see two rounded bodies which are known as the mammillary bodies. These are two mammillary bodies. And continuing backward, we can see a dark space here which is actually the point of junction between the cerebral hemispheres and the rest of the brain which includes the midbrain and the hindbrain. This dark space is defined by two peduncles or stalks which are known as the cerebral peduncles which are part of the midbrain. So the cerebral peduncles are these. This is the first cerebral peduncle and similarly on this side this is the second cerebral peduncle. Behind this dark space we can find three massive structures which are this is the pons first one. Second one lies here which is the medulla oblongata and continuing backward as the spinal cord and the last one is the cerebellum. This is the two, these are the two uh, lobes of the cerebellum. In the pons we can see the external features of the pons as well. On the anterior surface of the pons we can see a groove which is known as the basilar groove lodging the basilar artery. The basilar artery divides into two posterior cerebral arteries we can, which we can see here. These are two posterior cerebral arteries and this is the cut end of the basilar artery which lies here like this as the basilar artery. On the lateral side of the pons we can see that pons extends laterally to end into the cerebellum. This lateral part of the pons is known as the middle cerebellar peduncle which connects the pons with the cerebellum. The peduncle is actually a stalk which contains massive collection of white matter. So these are two middle cerebellar peduncles. And behind the pons we can see medulla oblongata here which includes uh, pyramids, olives and other structures which are related to the external structure of the medulla oblongata. But in, in this specimen the medulla oblongata has been removed. The last structure on the base of the brain is the cerebellum, this one. The cerebellum has got two lobes, one on both sides of the uh, midline. So this is the right cerebellar lobe and this is the second. The cerebellum has got depressions and elevations on its external surface as we can encounter here. The depressions are known as the fissures and the elevations in between the fissures are known as the folia. And more specifically, these elevated parts of the cerebellum are not known as the nodules. So that's all about the base of the brain but to focus on the 
cerebral hemispheres in detail on the base of the brain we have to look at the other specimen which is to focus on the cerebral hemispheres uh, regarding the base of the brain we have to remove the brain stem and the cerebellum which has been removed in this specimen so we can focus on the lobes and other structures of the cerebral hemispheres as we have discussed earlier that these parts of the frontal lobes are known as the orbital cortex because they are lying exactly above our eyes at the posterior end of this cerebral cortex we can see two rounded structures on uh, both sides of the midline which are known as the temporal lobes of the cerebral hemispheres so these are two temporal lobes and this part cut part is known as the midbrain and these two are the cerebral peduncles which we have discussed earlier and in between the two cerebral uh, peduncles we can see a depression which is known as the interpeduncular fossa which is the site of formation of circle of villus on the immediately on the lateral side of this uh, midbrain we can see a gyrus which is known as the parahippocampal gyrus so this is the parahippocampal gyrus this parahippocampal gyrus is rounded anteriorly to form a structure which is known as the hippocampus which is concerned with our uh, formation of memory and lateral to this parahippocampal gyrus we can see another gyrus which extends throughout the whole of the surface of temporal lobe which is known as the occipito temporal gyrus this gyrus extends into the occipital lobe as well this occipito temporal lobe has got lateral and medial parts separated by a socket or a sulcus so this is the occipito temporal uh, gyrus parahippocampal gyrus and occipito temporal gyrus are located on both sides of the midline as we have got temporal lobes on, on both sides of the midline the temporal lobe ends here somewhat here and the occipital the remainder of the part is the occipital lobe so the occipital lobe has got two gyri on close to the midline we can find el elongated gyrus which is known as the lingual gyrus and the rest of the occipital lobe is known as the fusiform gyrus due to its spindle shape so that's all regarding the base of the brain or ventral surface of the brain don't forget to subscribe and press the bell icon and also show your presence in the comment box thanks for watching